Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a model that we put into Blender and apply different textures, materials, and colliders to it. And then we're going to bring that into Unreal so that we can play around with it and apply those different materials and textures to it. So uh, this is going to be as quick as I can do it, but if you want to uh, follow along and you pause the video, hopefully you can keep up. So in Blender here, we're going to select our default cube. We're going to hit X to delete that. And then we're going to start off with a plane. And so if I hit Shift A, select the mesh, and then plane here. Zoom in using middle mouse wheel, scroll up and down. Hold down the middle mouse wheel to tumble around it. And I'm going to hit Tab to go into Edit Mode so that we can select these different vertices by left mouse clicking. Uh, so what we want to do is make sure that our, uh, our level here is going to have some walls here up on the side. I'm going to hold down the D key and left, you know, to draw our, so our grease pencil to create walls in this direction. And then, um, so to do that, we are going to select these two vertices and then hit the E key and drag that up. And you see this kind of has a little bit too much of free motion. So we're going to constrain that to the Z axis. And we're going to hold down the control key so that it snaps. And let's put it right about there. And if I hit the 5 key, that'll put us in orthographic mode. And then I'm going to hit the 1 key to make sure that it is uh, on the grid system. And so actually, if I scroll up here, I can see that I, I want to have this to be 3 meters tall. Our, our person's is going to be about 170 some meters, or if not 2 meters tall, depending upon how big we make him. I want to make sure that the wall is well above his head. So just another meter above his head is going to be fine. So I'm going to hit the G key to grab this, Z key to constrain it along the Z, and that blue line will tell you that it's doing just that. And then instead of trying to get this perfect, I'm going to hold down the control key, and that's going to snap it there. And so once it gets up to that line for three meters, I'm going to click to select it. And we're going to do the same thing on this one is here. So I'm going to hit A to unselect everything, B to select these, E to raise this up, Z to constrain that, and then hold down the control key. And in this view, it's going to constrain it to every meter, and so that looks about good. Click, and here is our, our level. Um, it's a little thin, or a little not wide enough, so I'm going to delete some of these. Uh, let's get rid of our grease pencil here. Oops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Uh, grease pencil's up here. And I'm going to hit A to deselect everything, and then A again to select everything. And I'm going to hit the S key to scale this, but I only want to scale it along this, this red line, which is the X axis. So I'm going to hit X to constrain it this way. And I'm going to make it about this wide, and if I hold down the Control key, it'll snap it right there and make sure it's on the line. And click to select. All right, so there's our basic level hallway. And of course, we're going to snap all these together to create long hallways. And next thing we want to do is set up our UV mapping so that we can apply textures to these walls and these floors. And in doing so, we want to define how big that those textures are going to be. So with everything selected and in edit mode, we're going to go up here to UV editing. And I'm going to hold down this middle mouse button to tumble around this, scroll up to zoom out. And to pan, you hold down the shift key while using your middle mouse wheel, uh, select, uh, holding it down, that is. And that'll kind of pan up and down. All right, so once we have all these selected, what I'm going to do is hit the U key on my keyboard and make sure my mouse is over on this window because if I have it over on this mouse window and my mouse over on this window and I hit U, nothing happens. So U, and then I'm just going to do a smart UV project keep the default settings, hit OK, and that'll set up our, our walls, which are these two faces, and then our floor. And so this looks OK. I'm not going to do anything yet because I'm going to go down here and open up a texture. So I'm going to go to textures, and if you don't know which texture you want just by looking at the file name, you can go up to this button up here and look at the thumbnails and search that way. So this one looks pretty good for both our wall and our floor, but I'm just going to use this as a reference for right now. I'm going to open that up and middle mouse wheel scroll up 
and I'm going to apply that. So if we were to go ahead and save this as is, what would happen is it would take this piece of the image for this particular wall and apply it to whatever wall this happens to be, whether it's the right or the left. But when we go ahead and tile this, it won't look that great. So we wanna make sure that these UV maps are selected such that they are tileable and repeatable based on the UV image that we have selected here. But all UV images that are seamless will do the same thing. And so of course, if we run it edge to edge, that'll be seamless. And then height to uh, the height, we can also make seamless. But I think for this case, because it's about uh, you know three meters tall, I'm not sure that this image is going to look that great repeatable. So uh, we could always fix it later, but what I wanna make sure is that it is seamless in the first place. So hitting L will select the entire uh, face here for one of these particular walls. And I'm not really sure which wall it is. So what we can do is go down here to this little button with a little mouse, and this is going to match up what's in edit mode with which UV uh, coordinate we're actually editing. So again, I'm gonna hit A to deselect it and then L to select uh, just this one. And it says we can not we can only do this if the face mode is uh, enabled. So we can go down here and select face mode on this button and do it this way. And that'll select this one. And then if I hit L over this one, it shows me that this one, it's indeed the, uh, the left one, I believe, uh, depending upon your perspective, of course. Okay, so once we have, once we know which part of our model we're actually editing, we can hit the S key just like in the edit mode to scale this up, the G key to grab it and move it. And so again, I'm really just concerned about the, the width of it because I, I think that the image is tall enough to stretch from top to bottom without having to tile. So the way that we can do this is X and then, or excuse me, S, and then X to scale along the X and just make it big enough G to kind of scale this in here like that and then maybe S and then Z again and then hold down shift to get a little bit finer movement with this and you get the idea but what I'm essentially doing is I want to make sure that these seams match up and they they for the most part will if you just kind of get it in there and then for this one select this face and that's going to be this one I probably should have scaled those up at the same time just so they're exactly the same but um, scale and then X to constrain that along the X axis hold down shift G to grab and move it X to constrain the grab just along the X axis here and put it around there uh, what we can do is we can actually look at these either in Unreal or in texture mode in Blender and match up these seams a little bit uh, better. But that's the idea is to kind of get the to get the measurements of our faces and how they match up to these particular uh, walls. Uh, for the floor, uh, we're not going to use this image for the floor. But what I'm going to do is because I want this to run up and down this way, I want the, the texture to run up and down this way. Right now, it's it's the texture is running along um, that way, and that's fine if you want. However, it's not going to this edge is not going to map to our. Uh, it's basically not going to be seamless because it's going to end here, and then the next hallway piece is going to start here. So it's going to start here and end here, and start here and end here, and that's not going to give us a good uh, a good. Um, uh, it's not going to give us a good seam on that. So we're going to go and just scale this up along the X, or I could just drag those two um, over here. So just X and click, and then S and then X to scale that in, holding down Shift to get that a little bit finer tune. Um, and the other thing I wanted to do was rotate it, hold down Control, because now this seam, actually all four, all four edges are seamless, but with other textures, I kind of want it to run this way. And we can see what that looks like in Unreal. And I'll show you what that, what that results in. But if you just rotate the, the face, it'll rotate the image that gets applied to it. And that's all we want to do for UV editing. Set that up, we can do it later. Select default to get back to this scene. 
And we're still in face select mode, which is you can get that down here in this menu. And I'm going to select, uh, at this point it doesn't matter, what we're going to do is select our, our, face, uh, our faces for our walls. And then going over to the materials tab, we have these material slots that we can assign different areas of our mesh to. So let's go ahead and start that process. It's going to add a new material slot. I'm going to then click add new material here. Click in here. I'm going to call this just wall just so we know what the material is. And I'm going to click assign. And what that's going to do is have our selected uh, faces be assigned to that material. And right now we only have one material. So this floor automatically gets that material as well. Add a new material slot because we want to have more than one material. And in that slot, there's nothing existing. We can select this one to select a existing material. We have just the default one that comes with Blender and then the, the wall that we just created. But I'm going to create a new one, and this one's going to be called Floor. Okay, so now we have Floor selected. But if I go ahead and select the floor, Wall gets highlighted. And that's because, as I said, when we create an initial material, everything in our mesh gets assigned to that material. So I have to select Floor and then Assign. And if I select this wall again, it goes to wall. If I select this floor in the mesh, it goes to the floor. So everything is set up material-wise for that. And that's all we have to do for setting up our material slots. And this way, when we bring in an Unreal, we can assign different materials to these different areas of our mesh. All right, so make sure you save your file. I am going to now start the export process. If I go to File, Export, and go to FBX, it's going to be our default for setting up FBX um, um, files for uh, bringing them into Unreal. So uh, I'm going to create, I'm just going to re overwrite this basic level straight. Uh, it's just the name that I have in here. And then let's expand this window a little bit and drag this up and then control middle click up to make this interface bigger for you guys. Drag this out a little bit more. All right. so my model that I want to select is that hallway and I'm only going to have selected objects because I like to have a lot of different assets in one blender file and then I can export those individually just by selecting them and then exporting each individual one. Make sure our scale is set to one because we already have our scale set up in blender such that one meter is equal to one unit and when we bring that over to Unreal that is also the same measure of units that we use in Unreal as well. All right, so for our uh, forward and up here, let's refer to this graphic that I have here. So in Blender, our z-axis is up, our y is in this direction, our x is in this direction, but in Unreal, z is also up, x is in this direction, positive x is over here, but y is in this direction. So y is it for Unreal is kind of facing toward us, Whereas in Blender, positive Y is facing the next direction. So first of all, we want to make sure that, that forward is in the negative Y in relation to Blender. So we're just going to flip this Y so that it points out here. And to do that, make sure we do forward negative Y. And then our up is Z up. And so make sure that that's selected. All right. And so these are going to be the items in Blender that we export. We just want to make sure that our armature, which is related to animation, is selected. And then holding down the shift key, our mesh, our actual meshes are exported as well. That's the most important thing. Uh, you can ignore these other uh, settings for right now. Going to geometries and for smoothing, do edge smoothing. And that's just going to define how our model is smoothed. Um, and then make sure that apply modifiers are is also selected. Because if we have any modifiers in Blender that we have not applied, because modifiers are great because they're non-destructive and so oftentimes we won't actually apply them because we still want to manipulate those modifiers such as a mirror modifier. Uh, that will apply those, meaning that'll make them final before exporting those to our FBX. In armatures and in animation, we can probably just keep those uh, the defaults for right now. And then you can save that by just hitting plus and then giving that a name uh, just so that you can always go back to that preset. And I have a couple presets up, set up already for Unreal as well. Uh, and you can have just the, uh, once you save it in that name, it'll show up in that list. Okay, so once all those are set up, we're going to export our FBX file. And once that's set up, we're going to go to Unreal. All right, so we're gonna 
launch our Unreal Engine editor here and it's going to pop up and what we're going to do is just start a basic project, nothing fancy and using uh, yeah you could choose in this example it doesn't really matter what you choose I'm going to make sure that there's no starter content for right now um, though you could if you wanted to and then just give it a name, whatever you want to call it, create project and so we're going to start off with this basic just platform where we can start placing our objects, namely our level, uh, our hallway piece, and, and start using that to uh, build out a hallway. Obviously, it's just going to be a straight hallway, but uh, we're going to then use some starter content, which we'll import later just in case you don't have starter content in here, because that's just going to be... Um, you always probably want to start your projects without starter content, the starter content is about 600 megabytes plus, so we don't normally want to have that in there from the get-go because we may or may not use it. All right, so once you have your basic project uh, opened up here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and, and import that, that starter project because it includes a bunch of materials that we're interested in. So if you go to Add New and all the way up here to Add Feature Content Pack, Go to content packs and any content packs that you have currently installed we just have this one here i'm going to add that to the project and it's going to create its own folder uh, for those assets i'm going to minimize that click on content right click on it then and then go to new folder because we're going to add a custom folder so it creates a new folder for us you can right click on it and go to um, rename which is up here or hit the f2 key so i'm going to hit the f2 key select that again hit F2 and then we're just gonna call it custom for right now once that's selected gonna go into this window do the same thing new window or new folder and then call this meshes and this is going to be where we import that FBX file so import can bring up a, uh, a folder that's not the folder that I I have so I'm gonna navigate to where we exported that basic level straight file out hit open uh, make sure that auto generate collision is off because we don't want to have just a big box collider surrounding our our, our hallway because we won't be able to go through it and everything else looks good so just import all okay and so once that's in there we can just drag this in and right mouse key and ASDF to kind of walk around our level Q to go down E to go up we can hit F to zoom in on this. If we hold down the Alt key and uh, the right mouse wheel, we can zoom in and out, or um, we can left click and kind of pan around that, that object, again, holding down the Alt key. So if you want to look at those viewport controls, you can just click on this and it'll open up a window to show you all the different viewport controls that I just mentioned. Okay, so once we have our hallway set up, we can actually delete this um, this four plane just by hitting the delete key and you can see one of our walls that are missing but if we hold down right mouse click and a to pan over to the left you can see that just this face is showing so once we have this we can alt drag on um, the y here and just drag that out and you can see i had to drag that out quite a bit an easy way to fix that is turn on snapping to one meter size grid and then when I drag this out by holding Alt, all I have to do is drag it twice. And so now we have a basic hallway going. But we do not have any colliders attached to this. So if we go into double click on this guy and bring in our window, you can see going to collision, we have none. And we can we can start to import create colliders using the collision menu up here but I don't like to do that but every time that we re-import this hallway say we want to add some some more detail uh, along the top or wherever and we re-import that it actually will um, sometimes delete the the collision uh, on that so let's go back into blender and talk about how to set up colliders for this so the way that we do that is we go back into object mode because these are going to be new meshes that we attach uh, to this object. And so first thing that we want to do is to have a box collider for the floor and then another box collider for each of these walls so that obviously we don't fall through the wall or we can't go through 
or fall through the floor or go can't go through the wall. So how do we do that? All right, if we expand this window out just a little bit, we can see that we have a plane. We want to also create three objects, three box colliders, one for each wall and then one for the floor. So we'll have additional objects here. The way that we do that the easiest is shift A, go to mesh, and I'm going to create a cube for a box collider. Go into edit mode by hitting tab, and I'm going to scale that down along the z-axis to shrink it down. And it doesn't really matter how wide it is. The most important part though is selecting this first face and opening them up this window. If it's not open, if it's like this, you can hit this little plus here. Just click on it, it'll open it up. And making sure that the Z is on the zero uh, coordinate system. And so that's going to put it flush with this wall. And then the other thing that I wanted to do is select everything by hitting A and then A again, and then scaling this out along the X axis and hold down control so that it's going to be exactly that big. Okay, so that's going to be our collider for the floor. So nothing that goes through it is going to um, be below that zero plane. And then we're just gonna do the same thing for the, uh, the walls. What's the easiest way to do that for the walls? Uh, let's go back out into object mode by hitting tab, shift A to do a new cube. And uh, for this one, what we're going to have to do is uh, move it from the origin over to this um, to this wall. So what's the easiest way for that? Well, I think initially we're just going to move it up into place. So G, constrain that to the Z axis by hitting Z, hold down control so it snaps up to the, the ground plane, which is zero. And then I'm going to hit G and then X to move it and then hold down control again and just move it there so now that this face is flush with the wall i'm going to go into tab edit mode select this face g and then x to constrain it along the x-axis and just give it a little bit of width it doesn't have to be too big and then this one g z to move it up hold down control and that'll snap a perfect box collider to the outside of that wall well we might actually want to do if we go into object mode hit the um, let's go hit one to go into front face G and then X and then hold down shift so we can get little small increments here just so I can move it out we don't want anything to collide through the wall and so if we set up these axes that way we might there might be a chance that the camera actually goes through the wall so I make sure that these box colliders are actually um, we don't go are actually on the far side of the wall just sticking out again so that there's enough chance that we don't actually see through the wall okay so we want to duplicate that over to this side and the easiest way is you could either copy it and then just um, using a mirror modifier um, to apply this let's see over mirror modifier over the y-axis so select y and actually because our origin is over here that's not going to work so i'm just going to copy this um, by hitting shift d constrain it to the x-axis holding x and then just snapping that over i'm going to hit the one key hit the z key to go into wireframe mode and now i can see this properly and because it's it's almost a perfect uh mirror it's it's shining through on this side i'm just going to hit g and x and move this along and there's better techniques to get this a little bit more perfect but i think that's really all we need so once you have your three box collider set up so that we don't go through either wall or the floor we have to go ahead and rename these uh, so we have our ground plane which is our entire mesh i'm going to actually rename that to something a little bit something a little bit more appropriate such as um, hallway is fine and then for our cubes that we export with our with our hallway, what Unreal is looking for is a naming convention. So if we do UCX for Unreal uh, Collision, and then X is just going to, I assume, be kind of uh, not necessarily any shape, but uh, allow us to have any kind of mesh in there to define that collider. And I'm just going to call that hallway. Um, and then for the other ones, we're going to actually let me call this hallway. Um, 
zero one. This one is going to be our wall, but again, using that prefix, you see X hallway O2. And Unreal only cares about that prefix. So double click on click on that twice and you see X hallway underscore three. All right, so now that I have those selected, holding the Z key or pressing the Z key, I can get out of uh, wireframe mode and do a box select, select everything and make sure that, I don't know if you can see this, but orange means that these are selected. So all four of these objects are selected and because of the UCX, those are gonna turn into box colliders when we export it out. So file export FBX, gonna overwrite our existing FBX file. I'm gonna go down here and just select one of my Unreal Engine exports that I have set up, go back to main and just make sure everything's set up appropriately and it is. And that's all I have to do. So export to FBX, go over to Unreal Engine and these will automatically get changed when I go to import basic level straight, open that up. And do I want to overwrite the existing instance? Yes or yes to all. We do not want to have auto generate collision on, select import all. And now when we double click on this model to go here, if we go to our colliders, you can see if we, uh, Uh, that we should have our colliders on, show simple, there we go, I hit the wrong button. Now you can see that those imported as colliders instead of meshes. So that's how you set up colliders outside of Blend, uh, in Blender and bring those into Unreal. So we'll just go ahead and save that, close that. And in our starter content here, we have a bunch of props that we can start bringing in. And actually if you click on the folder, allow us to bring in uh, like a chair here and that just kind of dropped it in space so I'm going to hit the end key to drop that on the ground plane and you can move that wherever you want to and uh, yeah so that's the essentials of how to do this um, importing our our level and you can see that these seams are showing up here all we would have to do is just rebuild our our lighting uh, which we'll do later, but so that'll go here. I just got a quick error there. Uh, and the next thing we want to do is actually apply. So once I rebuilt that lighting, everything looks great. But I want to apply a material. And so in props under materials, we have a couple materials for these different props, or we have a materials folder that is a little bit more what we're looking for with materials that um, is a little bit more appropriate for this. So like if you just drag in this moss material, it'll take that material and stretch it across our mesh. The gold might look a little bit better. Um, we will maybe want some bricks on here, which are a little big. And so what I'm realizing is that because our high our hallway is six meters wide and we're taking a material that's really meant for about a meter wide, we're just stretching that out way too far. So what I'm gonna do is go back one more time into Blender select our initial mesh uh, that is our hallway. So make sure hallway selected. Go to UV editing and hit tab to go into edit mode. And you can see that our floor is taking up all six meters wide is taking up just one meter. So it's gonna take whatever texture that we apply and stretch it. I don't wanna do that. So what I'm going to do is just uh, stretch this up. Um, I'm gonna hit the S key to do that, but then I'm going to hit the three key to scale that up three times and then click. And so what that's going to do is allow us to have the tiles duplicated here and over here. And let's just show you what that looks like. Um, so all I did was scale up that, that ground plane, that floor face. And then I'm going to just quickly export this again, make sure my presets are set to Unreal Engine export or whatever you named your export save over top of that old XBX file. And then I have to re-import it. So I'll select my menu to re-import it over top of our old one. And just do it that way. Yes to all, make sure no colliders are coming in with it. Now you can see that our, our texture is a little bit more appropriate. And you can play with the scale to get that to right. And the most important part is that we don't have any seams in there. 
Uh, the other thing is I don't have this bottom texture applied to my other hallways. If I just wanted to go ahead and apply that floor material to all these three, I'd have to go into my model itself. I'm just adding instances, changing the instances of that hallway, not the actual final model. So double click on that. And then you have a couple slots that we set up and these should look fairly familiar to you. Uh, if we, let's see, for the material slots, we have the wall that we named and the floor. So that's what we named it in Blender. And it's just gonna give it the, the world material. And I don't know, let's set it, let's look up brick and just choose these different brick materials. That was for the wall and then for the floor texture. Uh, let's see if we can select another brick. Let's do clay new. Um, yeah, that looks decent. Again, you can play around with it. Hit save on that. If you close that window, now it applied it to all the other three hallways that we have set up, but not the one that we changed of our instance. And so we can go ahead and change it in our instance uh, by clicking on it and then going into this inspector and instead of choosing cobblestone, I think it was what the second brick clay knew to match up there. And again, we kind of have some, um, some um, th seams that, that are visible here. And again, we just go up to build where you can drop this down, do build lighting only. And once that's set up, it usually takes a couple seconds to rebuild our lighting it will get rid of those seams for us and readjust all the shadows and now everything's looking great. And it's, our light is coming from the right here. So that's why this is changed. We could always um, change that like that, you know, having maybe a little bit more straight down or decrease the intensity there and play with other stuff. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys and that'll allow you to go from Blender to Unreal creating your own assets, and we're going to get more complicated as we go. But hope you found that useful. We'll see you next time. Thanks.